what is masking. The act of selecting a specific piece of video or use video overlay to hide, duplicate, reveal, or modify your footage. Now, like most things in DaVinci Resolve, there's more than one way to create mask. I'm gonna go over the color page first for some basic masking, and then I'm gonna get into Fusion. Now, on the color page, they're actually called power windows. You have a preset amount of them. Also, you have the pen tool. If I click on the square shape, it will give me a square shape box that I can actually modify. And go to handle softness and actually soften the edges. With the square, I can actually soften each side. Grabbing the center, I can move it around. Grabbing this little icon here, I can actually rotate it. Bro, the place is over his head. You get a preview here in the nose of what's actually in the mask. So you see his head here, which means anything I will do will only apply within the mask. So if I go down here and drop down the lift, it will only darken this area. If I increase my softness, it will soften the edges around and I can actually move the box in for a more confined look. If I want to get a look at my mask without the edges around it, I can go down here to the icon here, hit the drop down, and turn the power window off. If you want to add another mask that's the same, you actually go down here and hit this little plus here. Actually, I'm going to cut back on the power window first. Then if I hit the plus, I can get a secondary mask. Anytime you add a secondary mask, it'll pop up down here at the bottom of your mask controls. I can actually hit this to invert the mask so everything else will turn black. I can hit this to actually deactivate the mask. I can hit here to get rid of the mask entirely. You can use mask to create and apply different effects. So if I hit Alt S on my keyboard, create another serial node. In the effects tab, I already bring up the glow. I'm going to bring it and drop it on my secondary node. And the glow effect automatically applies to pretty much any light in your scene. So I turn up the green, the game, I'm sorry. You'll see that the light is brighter, but it's also making everything else around here bright. So if I go down here and select my pen tool in the power windows, I can actually draw a quick box around this light, isolating it from the rest of the video. I can soften that mask, make it more realistic. I can go over here and cut off the power window so I can actually see it. Now that light is brighter, of course his head is still darker from the original mask. Here I have a mask applied to his head. If I go over to the node flow, right click and hit add alpha point, it'll bring up this little blue dot over here. I take the blue dot from this, connect it there, and it will actually turn everything here transparent. So if I go back into the edit page, I'm going to move this up, bring in some secondary footage. Now I have that footage with the alpha background. This is also non-destructive, so if I would go back into the color page and remove and simply grab this and remove it, I get my footage back. The mask on the color page can also be tracked. So if I go like after that mask here and say, for instance, I drop down the lift again, I go here to tracking. I can actually select track back and forward. So now if I was to right click, add alpha point, connect this, and then say for instance, go back into the edit page. As he move around, the effect that I apply will actually move with them. If I take this secondary footage, put it here. In Fusion, you have these mass tools, you have the rectangle shape, the ellipse, polygon, and the B spline. These, of course, are two pre made shapes. The polygon and the B spline are more or less the same. It said when you use the, poly the B spline, any shapes you make will automatically round out. So more often than not, I usually use the polygon mask. For any node that you have highlighted in Fusion, if I click here, you see the orange highlight around it. Anytime you add a new node, it will automatically connect itself. So if I go to the polygon mask and click, it will connect itself to that and it will connect to the blue input. Each input means something different. The blue input is your mask input. It's actually highlighted down in the left-hand corner. If there's no node selected, say for instance, if I double click here in empty space, and I bring in the polygon mask, it's gonna bring it in empty space. I can still go through here and create a mask. And then I'll take the output of my polygon and connect it to the media one. And while I may connect itself to the blue input, giving me my mask. And the spectrum tab, you can soften the edges. You can also increase the border width, exposing more of your subject. Now, of course, anytime you add media to your node flow, it's going to make and create a merge node. Say for instance, you have multiple medias and you want them all to have the same mask. You can either copy this by hitting Control C, 
and control via the pace and attaching it or as far as i know pretty much all nodes you can take the output and stretch it out to as many nodes as you want to so if i take this output connected to media one that's the mask that I've already drawn. I can just connect it to my other inputs. And so now each one of these medias have the same mask. In order to use multiple masks, you can click on your original one. And say, for instance, if you go and you click rectangle shape, and I hold control and zoom out, I can actually reshape this how I want. But it's also in working in conjunction with this mask here. But say, for instance, I wanted to cut this out. I can select the rectangle mask, go over into my inspector, and this only occurs on the secondary mask. You get this paint mode. Right now, I set the merge. If I hit the drop down, I can actually hit subtract, and it'll just cut that back off. Again, the paint mode can only be applied to a mask that's attached to another mask. Now, I explained this in my rotoscoping video, which I'll leave a link for in the top card. But anytime you make a mask, right now I'm in frame 210, and say, for instance, I go to frame 220, and make this mask bigger. If I go back here and then I hit play, it'll show the animation of that mask for me. Now, if I want to get rid of that altogether, which is these two keyframes here, I can go to inspect the tab where it says right click here for shape animation. I can right click and then remove polygon poly one. At this point, if I reshape the mask, it's not gonna create any keyframes for me. I had to go back over here and hit the keyframe button, then move them down or move up and then make an animation or make a change to the mask and then it will create a new animation. These animations are also gonna be edited in the spline editor for sort of smoother animations. And combining the mask with the background node is a great way to create different shapes and things like that as well. If I go in here and hit the drop down, change the background node to white. With the background node I select it, I can hit the rectangle mask. And if I uncheck solid, it's gonna give me this green line to represent the actual mask itself. You also get the options of changing the position and length. So if I go up here and crank up the border width, you can actually see the color now of my background node. If you go over here to length and bring it down, it's actually gonna change the length. Now on the border style right now, it has a little oval selected. If you go over here and change this one, it'll cap it off where you actually can't see it. Then you can actually animate the length, the length if you wanted to. Go to frame 10, crank this up, hit my star or hit my keyframe, go to frame zero and bring it down to zero. It'll animate over time. I'm gonna double click this to reset. I'm gonna actually bring this down about about here, and then you can change the position. So if you wanted to animate this little trail over the course of your clip, you could. You can hit you want to do your first frame, you can actually hit the keyframe on zero, go to your last frame, and just crank it all the way up. And over time it will animate over the course of your clip. Again, you can modify the border width. You can actually soften the edges of the border width as well. And that's everything you need to know about masking DaVinci Resolve. If I missed anything, be sure to drop a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video.